Chapter 9 of Badge of Infamy. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Badge of Infamy by Lester Del Rey. Read by Stephen H. Wilson of Prometheus Radio Theater. www.prometheusradiotheater.com Nine. Judgment. Doc woke to see sunlight shining through a heavily barred window that must be in the official Southport jail. He waited a few minutes for his head to clear and then sat up. Necrosynth left no hangover, at least. The sound of steps outside was followed by the squeak of a key in the lock. Fifteen minutes, Judge Wilson, the voice said. Thank you, officer. Wilson came into the cell, carrying a tray of breakfast and a copy of the Northport Gazette. He began unloading bracky weeds from his pocket while Doc attacked the breakfast. They tossed the book at you, Doc, he said. You haven't got a chance, and there's nothing the villages can do. Trial set for tomorrow at Northport, and it's in closed session. We can't get you off this time. Doc nodded. Thanks for coming, even if there's nothing you can do. I've been living on borrowed time for a year anyhow, so I have no right to kick. But who's we? The villages. I've been part of their organization for years. The old man sighed heavily. You might say a revolution has been going on since I can remember, though most villagers don't know it. We've just been waiting our time. Now we've stopped waiting and the rifles will be coming out. Rifles made in village shops. The villages are going to rebel, even if we're all dead of plague in a month. Doc Feldman nodded and reached for the bracky. He knew this was their way of trying to make him feel his work hadn't been for nothing, and he was grateful for Wilson's visit. It was a good year for me. Damn good. But time is running short. I'd better brief you on the latest on the plague. Wilson began making notes until Doc was finished. Finally, he got up as steps sounded from the hall. Anything else? Just a guess. A lot of Earth germs can't live in Mars normal flesh. Maybe this can't live in Earth normal. Tell them so long for me. So long, Doc. He shook hands briefly and was waiting at the door when the guard opened it. An hour later, the lobby police took Feldman to the Northport shuttle rocket. They had some trouble on the way. A runner cut down the street with the crowds frantically rushing out of his way. Terror was reaching the cities already. Doc flashed a look at Chris. Mob hysteria. Like flying saucers and wriggly tops, I suppose, he asked before the guard could stop him. They locked his legs but left his hands free in the rocket. He unfolded the paper Wilson had brought and buried his face in it. Then he swore. They were explaining the runners as a case of mob hysteria. Northport was calmer. Apparently, they had yet to have first-hand experience with the plague. But now nothing seemed quite real to Doc, even when they locked him into the big Northport jail. The whole ritual of the lobbies seemed like a fantasy after the villages. It snapped back into focus, however, when they led him into the trial room of the medical lobby building. It was a smaller version of his trial on Earth. Fear washed in by association. The complete lack of humanity in the procedure was something from a half-remembered and horrible past. The presiding officer asked the routine question, Is the prisoner represented by counsel? Blaine, the dapper little prosecutor, arose quickly. The prisoner is a pariah, Sir Magistrate. Very well. The court will accept the protective function for the prisoner. You may proceed. I'll be the judge. I'll be the jury. And prosecution and defense. It made for a lot less trouble. Of course, if Space Lobby had asserted interest, it would have gone to a supposedly neutral court. But as usual, Space was happy to leave it in the hands of medical. The tape was played as evidence. Doc frowned. The words were his, but there had been a lot of editing that subtly changed the imports of his notes. I protest, he challenged. It's not an accurate version. The lobby magistrate turned a wooden face to him. 
Does the prisoner have a different version to introduce? No, but... The evidence is accepted. One of the prisoner's six protests will be charged against him. Blaine smiled smoothly and held up a small package. We wish to introduce this drug as evidence that the prisoner is a confirmed addict, morally irresponsible under addiction. This is a package of so-called brachyweed, a vile and noxious substance found in his possession. It has alkaloids no more harmful than nicotine, Feldman stated sharply. Do you contend that you find the taste pleasing? Blaine asked. It's bitter, but I've gotten used to it. I've tasted it, the magistrate said. Evidence accepted. Two deductions, one for irregularity of presentation. Doc shrugged and sat back. He'd tested his rights and found what he expected. It was hard to see now how he had ever accepted such procedure. Jake must be right. They'd been in power too long and were making the mistake of taking the velvet glove off the iron fist and flailing about for the sheer pleasure of power. It dragged on while he became a greater and greater monster on the record. But finally it was over, and the magistrate turned to Feldman. You may present your defense. I ask complete freedom of expression, Doc said formally. The magistrate nodded. This is a closed court. Permission granted. The recording will be scrambled. The last bit ruined most of the purpose Doc had in mind, but it was too late to change. He could only hope that some one of the medical men present would remember something of what he said. I have nothing to say for myself, he began. It would be useless. But I had to do what I did. There's a plague outside. I've studied that plague, and I have knowledge which must be used against it. He sat down in three minutes. It had been useless. Blaine arose with a smile still plastered on his face. We, of course, recognize the existence of a new contagion, but I believe we have established that this is one disseminated by the prisoner himself and probably not directly contagious. There have been many cases of fanatics ready to destroy humanity to eliminate those they hate. Now surely the prisoner has himself left no question of his attitude. He asserts he has knowledge and skill greater than the entire medical research staff. He has attempted to intimidate us by threats. He is clearly psychopathic, and dangerously so. The prosecution rests. The guards took Doc into the anteroom, where he was supposed to hear nothing that went on, but their curiosity was stronger than their discretion, and the door remained a trifle ajar. The magistrate began the discussion. The case seems firm enough. It's fortunate Dr. Ryan acted so quickly, with some of the people getting nervous. Perhaps it might be wise to publicize our verdict. My thought exactly, Blaine agreed. If we show Feldman is responsible and that medical is eliminating the source of the infection, it might have a stabilizing effect. Let's hope so. The sentence will have to be death, of course. We can't let such a rebellious psychopath live. But this needs something more, it seems. You've prepared a recommendation, I suppose. There was the case of Albrecht Delier, Blaine suggested. Something like that should have good publicity impact. It struck Doc that they sounded as if they believed themselves, as the witch-burners had believed in witches. He was sweating when the guards led him before the bench. The magistrate rolled a pen slowly across his fingers, and his eyes raked Feldman. Pariah Daniel Feldman, you have been found guilty on all counts. Furthermore, your guilt must be shared by that entire section of Mars known as the Villages. Therefore, the entire section shall be banned and forbidden any and all services of the medical lobby for a period of one year. Sir Magistrate! One of the members of the Southport Hospital staff was on his feet. Sir Magistrate, we can't cut them off completely. We must, Dr. Harkness. I appreciate the fine humanitarian tradition of our lobby which lies behind your protest, but at such a time as this the good of the body politic requires drastic measures. Why not see me after court, and we can discuss it then? He turned back to Feldman, and his face was severe. The same education which has produced such fine young men as Dr. Harkness was wasted on you and perverted to endanger the whole race. No punishment can equal your crimes, but there is one previously invoked for a particularly horrible case, 
and it seems fitting that you should be the fourth so sentenced. Daniel Feldman, you are sentenced to be taken into space beyond planetary limits, together with all materials used by you in the furtherance of your criminal acts. There you shall be placed into a spacesuit containing sufficient oxygen for one hour of life and no more. You and your contaminated possessions shall then be released into space to drift there through all eternity as a warning to other men. This sentence shall be executed at the earliest possible moment, and Dr. Christina Ryan is hereby commissioned to observe such execution. And may God have mercy on your soul. End recording.